Recently, we talked about Delta Force Hawk Ops, the upcoming free-to-play FPS that has a bit of everything for everyone. In that video, we did a sort of top-level overview of the game and what it looks to offer. Honestly, I was blown away by the reception of that video, so I figured, hey, let's go super in-depth here and get really into it. So today, we're going to be taking a look at everything that you should know about for the upcoming title, from what the game will include, when you'll get your first chances to play, even a bit of drama and controversy with the game. So we're taking a deep dive into Delta Force Hawk Ops in this one, so if you enjoyed the video, do me a huge favor and drop a like on it, and of course, make sure you subscribe for more Delta Force Hawk Ops coverage, as well as other FPS content here, but let's just get into it. First and foremost, let's start simple. What is Delta Force Hawk Ops? Well, it's a free-to-play shooter that looks to tackle some of the biggest FPS competition out there. The game is going to have large-scale combat akin to Battlefield, an extraction mode akin to Tarkov, or honestly, probably more perhaps like DMZ if you're looking for an arcade shooter comparison, rather than a super tactical milsim FPS, and then a campaign which is a remaster of the classic Delta Force Black Hawk Down, which for the original fans of the franchise, this will be a welcome addition, I think, to the content offering, as the multiplayer and the extraction shooter will have sort of hero elements to it, abilities and such that are night and day a deviation from the original tactical nature of the Delta Force series. So, while it may not necessarily be for everyone, it seems like at least it's trying to capture a bit of everything for everyone, in hopes that you'll like at least one of those main elements to the offering. But what I find fascinating about this is that you have three pillars of a game all built into one, right? That rivals most modern day AAA titles, like COD has a campaign, multiplayer and zombies, last year had a campaign, multiplayer and DMZ. You're getting the same equivalent at a first glance, not for $70 like you would a regular AAA title, not for a discounted $50 or $60 but instead for free with Delta Force, which is why at the very beginning, it sounds very interesting for sure. Now, the game is being developed by Timmy Group, a subsidiary of Tencent. For those aware, their team essentially built out COD Mobile. So it is something that they have this experience building out a massive free-to-play experience for players across the globe. Now, we'll touch on in a little bit here some stuff that may sway you one way or the other because of Timmy Group or Tencent, but just simply stating the facts. Firstly, that's who's developing it. Now, the game will be supported for PC, PlayStation, Xbox and mobile, which is interesting. Now, there was nothing that mentioned explicitly which of those platform consoles that the game will be built out for. My guess is if we're talking about PlayStation and an Xbox in today's day and age, I'm imagining it's just for the current generation and not backwards to PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. But I could be wrong on that, but nothing has been specified just yet. That's just the general assumption. Now, there will also be crossplay, which is something that is kind of standard now for today's day and age. But one thing that is not explicitly confirmed nor denied is if mobile will be in that alongside the mainline platforms as well. I mean, we recently saw the launch of Warzone Mobile where that had plenty of sweats jumping on and playing mobile players, but with controller and other inputs beyond just touch settings. But when you consider the vast number of players that will probably take part in Delta Force as a free to play game, the average player who's on mobile probably won't be sweating it up as much as somebody playing on controller on mobile. So if they're going up against regularly mouse and keys or controller players, I'm curious to see if there's going to be anything in regards to excluding that mobile player pool from the standard matchmaking, or if it's just something they're throwing them all to the wolves. We'll see how that all works out, but crossplay will be something supported with Delta Force Hawk Ops. Now, as for an ETA or release, there is no explicit date given here, but it is something that from the very beginning, they've stated that it's a target for H1 or half one of 2024. So upwards of June 30th, there should be some playable worldwide alpha test. Again, no explicit details are known just yet, but that's the plans they have to open it up in the next few months for players to take part and experience it in the comfort of their own homes at their own setups. They have been doing some events globally, like a kind of tour showing off a little bit of the earliest gameplay with it. But in terms of us getting our hands on it, that should be something that's expected by the end of June, perhaps, or the first half of this year. Now, for that or the game at large, is there any pay to play aspect of it? Nope, the game will be entirely free to play, but as we'll touch on in our concerns to be aware of portion, the concept of microtransactions is likely going to be very apparent and readily seen in day-to-day -day gameplay when launched. But anyways, let's talk about the gameplay details here with this and get a little bit more into the nitty gritty instead of the top level stuff. So the gameplay, again, we already talked about, they have those three pillars, the large scale PVP sort of traditional multiplayer is Havoc Warfare. Then you also end up having that extraction mode, that going by the name of Hazard Operations and then the campaign mode of Black Hawk Down. Again, 
again a remaster of that original but let's start out with the multiplayer side because there's actually a lot that we've seen recently updated for the gameplay details in regards to that havoc warfare large-scale pvp so this will be large teams on a massive map featuring military vehicles tanks and helicopters and their initial marketing assets back in august when the game was announced they also announced the deathmatch style game mode which doesn't seem like there's been much an update on if that's coming if it's not coming but recently their website was overhauled and redone to which their havoc warfare segment actually has a decent bit more information regarding it where it says firstly that it has a classic reboot as a 100 remake of classic maps with original delta force combat revived which that's pretty cool if that's actually exactly how it's going to play out. I know that that was a big point of contention for the old school Delta Force fans as the IP was purchased a couple of years back. And so this is very clearly not in line with the original Delta Force games. But if there's an inclusion of classic maps, that might be a draw that can bridge that gap perhaps between new and old players. But anyways, further information in the mode, we'll be able to use nearly 10 vehicles in game, which will include assault ships, battle tanks, Black Hawk helicopters, armored vehicles, ATVs, and more. And they detailed a little bit of those in particular five of them in which they included the ah 1035d assault helicopter where that was a heavy attack helicopter with unrivaled air to surface capabilities which is highly effective against armored vehicles with a gunner against ground personnel this also coming along with flares to counter any incoming missiles or rockets the all-terrain vehicle is of course just an ATV. It's a versatile four-wheeled vehicle, extremely mobile and extremely fragile though, so it can break quite easily. The Lav G1 IFV is an eight-wheeled IFV with a highly mobile and wide range of armaments that can be installed. It's effective against both vehicles and infantry and comes with a defensive combat system, whereas the counterpart of the Lav AA is installed with anti-air armaments, serving as the strongest line of defense against enemy air superiority. And the final thing was the assault vehicle or armored transport, which is a light armored transport vehicle with a top mounted weapon station for protecting passengers and dealing damage to enemy infantry utilizes mobility to deploy a respawn beacon rapidly deploying allied infantry to be designated at a location near the enemy so basically like your tanks that you'd see in ground war and modern warfare 2019 modern warfare 2 and modern warfare 3 it's kind of again that way you could respawn further in than just maybe say captured points around the map now we also saw details about weaponry where again five weapons were detailed firstly the rcx spear battle rifle was a multi-caliber rifle that fires 277 but also can be converted to use 762 by 51 and 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor cartridges now what they showcased it came along with the LPVO optic the RCX practical suppressor muzzle the K1 elite angled grip the marksman D2 rear grip and the practical tactical stock the M4A1 that was showcased came kitted with the panoramic red dot sight RZ integral stock kit the M460 round drum mag the practical bipod and the precision tactical suppressor we also learned the PKM light machine gun which was described as being fully automatic that fires full power cartridges and has a medium rate of fire but strong suppression it was kitted out with the 1p29 sight optic the pkm practical long barrel the pkm extended magazine the x25u angled combat grip and the sandstorm vertical compensator the as val assault rifle was one that was introduced as well where that was described as a russian special operations rifle with powerful penetration capabilities and it was kitted with the russian accuracy scope vss elite long barrel combo the rk04 grip the vss SS 45 round magazine and the VSS elite integral stock and finally the last weapon that was detailed was the k-15 submachine gun a fully automatic submachine gun with a fast rate of fire that allows it to deal massive damage bursts at close range and it was kitted with the hammer optic k-15 elite ultra long barrel combo echo suppressor practical vertical foregrip k-15 40 round extended mag and the k-15 resonant integral stock now this is the first time we saw any of this stuff detailed if you didn't go out of the way to look for gameplay from some of the closed tests around the world where they were doing that again tour of the gameplay itself so it's cool to see this kind of stuff and i'm curious to see in the future what else is revealed in regards to new weaponry new vehicles and things like that because surely those are not the only weapons we're going to see there was more in the gameplay trailers and such that we hadn't seen just yet so there's definitely more on the way but those were what was explicitly detailed for us now as we talked about there is a sort of hero element here to it you have specific classes you have four classes across the multiplayer and that extraction mode as well with assault engineer recon and medic each with their own unique roles to fulfill the assault class your character is dire wolf with the tactical gear of the motorized exoskeleton which will activate a wrist mounted mechanism to overload the exoskeleton's power gaining increased movement speed and rate of fire temporarily knocking down enemies will recover HP and stamina while extending that overload duration. You have the gadgets of the triple blaster and the smoke grenade, which is a hand triple grenade launcher that can be used for anti-tank plus.
display. That smoke grenade, again, is just a standard smoke grenade. And your trait is a tactical slide, which will enhance agility and allows for the use of tactical slides in gameplay. The engineer class, your character is Shepard. You have the tactical gear of the Sonic Paralysis, which will launch a Sonic UAV that paralyzes enemy limbs, reducing their rate of fire and movement speed. But you can also make the UAV fly forward and paralyze the area ahead as a one-time use, or you can have it defend the current area and hit enemies with the Sonic Paralysis four times. The gadget of the Sonic Trap will adhere to hard surfaces, and when triggered, it generates a subsonic wave that penetrates enemies' vests and slows them down. Kind of like that suppression mine from Modern Warfare 2 here this past year. The gadget of the Frag Grenade is just a Frag Grenade, and the trait of the Buffer Defense uses a device to generate anti-phase sound waves to reduce damage from explosive shock. The Recon class comes along with the character named Luna, which the tactical gear is the Recon Arrow, which will fire with your bow, and while flying, its arrow consumes power to probe the surroundings and mark exposed enemies, kind of like marking them again in a recon state. The gadget of the Volt Arrow will fire and generate electronic currents to deal damage over time, and the Frag Grenade comes along with recon as well, and the character trait is Hunter's Mark, where Luna's damage marks enemies for a short duration of time. The final class you have an option to is Support. That character is named B Colony, interestingly, but the tactical gear is the Therapeutic Pistol, which has a lock and track module that can lock onto targets and heal multiple allied operators at the same time. Time. However, if you're just finding yourself in a solo operation, you can heal yourself with this as well. You have a smoke screen gadget, which will launch a gesture controlled UAV that emits a smoke screen while flying forward. You have the hive tech smoke grenade, which again is a multi-purpose smoke grenade, but this will disperse a beehive of medical nanobots to heal teammates in your vicinity. And finally, your trait is quick rescue, which injects a beehive of medical nanobots from the therapeutic pistol into a down squad mate to recover more HP. So a lot to take in from the classes, the weapons, and the vehicles, but let's talk about the extraction mode and what we know here, hazard operations. Going to be utilizing basically all of that still, it seems like. Maybe not the vehicles to that degree, because it is an extraction mode of three-man squads with classes, gear, and maps with routes to adapt to on the fly. You're hunting for resources and rare loot around the world to outwit enemy AI, but also other player squads, where ultimately you want to extract to claim the rewards you loot and pick up along the way. So while there's not a whole ton detailed in regards to specifics about this, the gameplay that's already been showcased and released of this makes it seem like a standard extraction loop, where you do have, again, the ever-present danger of dying and losing all your gear, but also it's pretty straightforward on what you have to do and what your goal is during that. So not a whole ton that really needs to be detailed about this, I think, but anyways, the campaign mode of Black Hawk Down, again, is a remaster of the original Delta Force Black Hawk Down. It features those iconic scenes where you can rediscover Mogadishu, the street battles, the night ops, and the crash sites. The classic storyline is back where you can immerse yourself in that first person retelling of the Delta operations. You have classic characters, both mysterious and iconic characters returning, making their comeback. Those not being detailed in particular just yet, they said to stay tuned for that kind of stuff. But honestly, I think this campaign mode is going to be a big draw on focal point for the realistic milsim players the people that again of the classic delta force games they liked those they're not necessarily too keen on the hero elements i get it it's not for everybody usually it's not my cup of tea either but i'm looking forward to at least trying it out but with the core gameplay and the multiplayer being such a departure from the originals this i think is where a lot of people are going to find comfort if they're not really into that kind of stuff so that'll be coming along and that's the three main modes here that you have in regards to gameplay but again when can we play? That's the big question. We talked about how there was that intended goal to get it in players' hands by the first half or end of the first half of 2024, and that's still the case, but beyond that, there are global tour plans throughout Q1, which is wrapping up here. I think they just did one in Los Angeles, and where those are going around, it's interesting because it seems like it truly is just a random pool of players that you can sign up through their Discord, and then maybe if you're in that area, you get the luck of the draw and you're invited out. It's not anything where it's like exclusively content creators exclusively big press outlets or anything like that. It's truly just regular players, which is pretty cool to see happen with gameplay tests like this kind of stuff. But again, half one of 2024, upwards of June 30th, it seems like that's still the target for a worldwide alpha test. Now, the final things to wrap up with are some additional pieces of information, some controversy, and honestly, some things that I think 
should be concerns to be aware of. I'm not saying that this is anything that you guys need to be concerned with. If it's not something that you feel you're not, that's fine. But just as added additional information that is important to making your own informed decisions about the game. Well, firstly, there's a little bit of controversy going on right now with this game where Tencent is the publisher here and they've had the highest hand in that development. Like that's the Activision to this game in regards to like a comparison to Call of Duty. The game itself is developed by the studio that worked on COD Mobile. So again, that's pretty cool. They know the ins and outs of managing a game of such a large scale and at free to play. But Tencent as a whole has a history of putting out games that are, um, let's say, very similar to other existing games. What's interesting is that from some gameplay that's already been released, there's already examples of some animations being identical to Call of Duty animations. And sure, in some instances, it's like, all right, how else are you going to reload a weapon? There's bound to be some crossover, but some are just straight up seemingly lifted from COD titles and their animations. So rightfully, there's a bit of controversy surrounding that kind of stuff, a more almost plagiarized element of the game, but for some people, that may be a non-issue. Again, some people may hate that, some people may just be like, okay, cool, I'm getting a free Call of Duty, essentially. But additionally, there's other concerns in the way of what free-to-play brings to the table. The two things, to me, is cheating and microtransactions. Cheating is absolutely probably going to be something we see happen here throughout this free to play version of Delta Force Hawk Ops. Fingers crossed there's a killer anti-cheat to combat this kind of stuff, but for me, it's prepare for the worst, hope for the best. That's the way that I take it. So we'll see what time does present with this and how it all breaks down. But again, the prospect of free to play is always just, it's littered with cheating possibilities. And additionally, microtransactions will be honestly likely integral to the game itself, maybe even with pay to win elements. Now, of course, there's no upfront cost. The game itself is free to play. That's already something that you got to be aware of. But produced by Tencent, it's already an indicator that there's likely going to be in-game purchases. But just to offset development and upkeep costs, there needs to be revenue from somewhere. As awesome as it would be to have a game completely free, a labor of love for the arcade shooter fans, by arcade shooter fans, no strings attached, that's just simply not the reality in which we live in. I would absolutely wager that MTX or microtransactions are going to be in your face with this game and going to be something that the shop is something that is ever constant, ever pushed here and that's something that may not be for everyone. But anyways, getting past that kind of stuff, that is basically everything that we know about Delta Force Hawk Ops right now. So that, I think, is where I feel comfortable leaving you guys with this kind of stuff. So let me know your thoughts down below. Is there anything in particular you guys are looking forward to or maybe not looking forward to with Delta Force Hawk Ops? Anything that catches your interest? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it out on Insightful, do me a favor, drop a like on the video, really does help out the video, and shows you guys enjoy the variety of FPS content here. Here. So drop a like if you guys enjoy, and of course, consider subscribing to stay the day with all things Delta Force Hawk Ops and other FPS content here on the channel. Love to have you, but for now, that's what we're going to call it. So thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.